Have you had a bad experience with a marine survey? Wondering what that is and how to do it right? Good day boaters. This is Billy with BoatAlert.com. Today, we will do a deep dive into the marine survey process. Without further ado, let's dive right in. When buying or selling a boat you will need to go through many steps. We cover some of those on the Boat Alert blog. One such step requires a survey. When choosing a marine surveyor, plan to understand the surveyors themselves, and thus the big choice of boat surveys they're doing, noting the importance of matching the surveyor to the precise boat. Now, let's look specifically at pre-purchase surveys, and therefore understand it from the perspective of a buyer or a seller. The pre-purchase boat survey can make or break a deal, so it is in everyone's interest to understand what is going on. Say you've found the right boat and made a suggestion contingent upon a survey and you already looked up the HIN report at BoatAlert.com, or you're selling your boat and eventually found a buyer at the right price. No matter which side of the negotiation you're on, it helps to understand the overall steps and situation. First let's talk about the marine surveyor's perspective. For the surveyor, it can be tough because of the parties involved and in the pending sale. Be understanding. The surveyor is hired by, and works for, the buyer. But the broker and owner have an interest in getting the transaction to succeed and get paid for the used boat sale. Furthermore, the broker might refer clients to the surveyor every so often, and thus the vendor might be a possible customer for the surveyor when he or she buys their next boat. All of this looks like a conflict of interest brewing, and abuses can happen, especially if a broker asking buyers to hire a specific surveyor. The Society of Accredited Marine Surveyors and National Association of Marine Surveyors organizations are cognizant of this, and both have clear codes of ethics established for their members to follow. Second, let's talk about the process of a marine survey. Fortunately for all, there is a transparent path forward, every boat comes with a checklist and it's a surveyor's job to define what's in this list as objectively as possible. It's not the surveyor's role to tell the customer whether or not to buy, and overemphasizing minor problems could mislead the customer. The same be be true when ignoring problems. Experienced brokers know, too, that they don't want to sell a ship that has problems. They need to discover these problems if they are not already known in the boat alert history check. They want the new owner to be pleased with the pre-owned boat because a happy owner is more likely to become a repeat customer. Remember, boat owners are rarely surprised by survey findings, generally, they know their boat better than anyone. There are some checks and balances in the process. For example, the survey report will be going to the insurance company as well so the marine surveyor cannot exaggerate problems to help the buyer bring the price down. Now, I want to mention the main marine survey guidelines that they use. There are guidelines utilized within the survey that help with many of the judgment calls, the surveyor is not just performing on his or her opinions. First and foremost is the Code of Federal Regulation, often mentioned as Coast Guard Regulations. These cover minimal requirements for safety equipment, navigation lights, sanitation, engine, fuel and electrical systems on gasoline-powered boats. Diesel-powered boats are free from the mechanical and electrical regulations. Close behind the CFRs are the American Boat and Yacht Council standards, which are recommendations rather than regulations, but can carry significant weight if a problem lands in court. Additional standards that surveyors cite come from the National Fire Protection Agency, and in some specific cases, the surveyor might use other sources. Are there still judgment calls? Certainly. Next, you might be wondering, what is the scope of a pre-purchase survey? While a client is free to make any arrangements with a surveyor acting as his consultant, people have created a normal pre-purchase condition and value survey. It's an inspection of the boat to ascertain its condition, check its systems for basic operation and adherence to applicable regulations and standards, look for any warning signs which can recommend a follow-on inspection by a specialist, and determine its overall value. The key point is that the survey could also be a limited inspection. Generally, the surveyor won't disassemble permanent parts of the boat to access areas they can't see, so some areas won't be inspected. And it's a snapshot of the boat at that specific moment, there's no guarantee that an electrical component that powered up during the survey won't suddenly reach the end of its life in the coming weeks. The routine all starts with an inspection on its hull and bottom cleaning within midday, then a hull inspection once the boat dries, relaunching and a quick sea trial, followed by any more inspections needed. Also, while the routine above could even be perfect for a powerboat within the water on a sunny day, it often must be done in other weather, the yard schedule, and other variables. If it's December up north and thus the boat is stored ashore for the season, you would have to do your best and then save the sea trial until the spring. The report your surveyor will provide can contain 
1. Descriptions of the boat and each system on board. 2. Findings and proposals, divided into levels of importance. 3. A statement of the boat's overall condition. 4. Fair market and replacement values for the boat, supported by comparable sales or industry data. Remember that you can look up the boat's value on hindicoder.com. Now the big question. What is the cost of a marine survey? Well, a pre-purchase survey will cost somewhere around $22 per foot, but it'll be higher on large and complicated boats. Older boats will be more expensive as well and might require more work and cleaning to be able to inspect. To end this talk, here is our advice for getting the foremost out of a survey. Let the surveyor assess any red flags for you, moisture, blisters, and engine mounts. If there's some deficiency which may absolutely disqualify the boat in your mind, let the surveyor know to ascertain that first. Surveys sometimes end abruptly, and it's common for the surveyor and client to agree on some partial payment if an apparent defect convinces the customer that there's no need to continue. Make sure to be there physically so the surveyor can show you their findings face-to-face -face and be helpful, by moving things out of the way. Write down your questions so you won't distract the surveyor during the work. Sellers have to start their preparation long before the survey. Keep a log with all invoices for maintenance and repair work performed on the boat throughout its life. Prior to the survey, clean the boat and deduct any clutter. Let all parties know you're available to answer questions. For everyone involved, use common sense. Realize that you are buying a boat so you are probably well off and enjoy the process. There are plenty of boats and buyers out there if this isn't the proper fit. Alright, if you now understand this topic well, please give us a thumbs up. To see more videos like this in the future make sure to hit that subscribe button. Lastly, if you want to see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a comment down below. Alright, that's all we have for you today, and as always I hope to see you next time.